What's up friends? If somebody asks you which Apple product remains visually unchanged for the longest time, chances are many of you would just point at the iMac with its unique appearance has kept its current form for the last eight years. So long that some of us got tired of hoping for its new identity. In 2020, those hopes were revived with some new rumors mentioning more radical improvements, which in the end left us empty handed. One year later, this subject is getting seriously hot, especially since Apple already has shown big potential with its in house built silicon, the same silicon that should power next generation of iMacs. Please share in the comments, would you consider buying the next gen iMac or you would prefer MacBook or eventually Mac mini as the alternative. Now the intro and let's go. Hi guys and welcome to Digital Marketing Channel. My name is Marco and this is your weekly fix of tech news, leaks, rumors and opinions everything about Apple and their competitors. If you want to be up to date with latest and future Apple products, subscribe now, leave a comment below, hit the like button and don't forget to enable notifications so you don't miss the next video. The last iMac was released in 2020 in shape of 27 inch model. I think there is a consensus in tech community that this was most likely the last version of iMac that was powered by Intel processor. It arrived with Radeon GPU, which again may turn out to be non-existent as an option in its next iteration. Based on experiences with M1 chip, we have witnessed impressive capabilities of the first gen desktop class Apple Silicon. However, these were just entry level chips. And according to various reports and leaked data, we believe that the advanced, more improved version of the M1 chip will be under the hood of the next iMac, designated as M1X. Depending on the source of information, predictions vary from article to article. 12, 16 or even more CPU cores have been mentioned. What they all do share in common is the fact that Apple will not use previously introduced chips with those devices. So we should not expect M1 that we already seen before. In any case, we will witness that pretty soon, I guess. A couple of months ago, China Times report suggested that the new iMac model besides so-called A14T processor, which can translate to modify M1 equivalent, in this case M1X, will include bumped up new graphics processor, officially codenamed Lifuka. This has sparked some really big speculations about possible reveal of the first discrete graphic card made by Apple. So far, there were no confirmations about this claim. And given how well M1 8-core graphic has proven in benchmark and real-world results, we may assume there will be no necessity for such a step after all. Back in December, Mark Gurman of Bloomberg has mentioned that Apple is seriously working on 16 and 32 core GPUs and even above. The exact number of GPU cores with the upcoming Apple Silicon for this iMac remains secret. We can guess it could be on pair with the number of CPU cores, but that's just guessing. With the release of M1, Apple has almost changed the way we'll look at the system memory, at least on a desktop, since we already seen it before with A12X chip on the iPad Pro from 2018. With its unique unified memory approach, Apple Chips manages to get faster access to memory, which by default results with the increase in system performance. Chips unified memory is distributed to CPU and GPU cores according to demands of application that's being used. When it came into Spotlight, Apple's M1 was introduced in two options, one with 8 gigs and the other one with 16 gigs 
of unified system memory. As mentioned in my previous video, the next edition of Apple Silicon could come with more memory options like 16 and 32 or something like that. The biggest and long awaited change to Apple's iMac should be its redesign. And while we have a clue how it may look like, there is still no 100% certainty beside the fact that it will showcase narrow bezels similar to the one that we've seen already on latest iPad Pro models and iPad Air, aka Liquid Retina. No doubt there will be a huge interest in potential implementation of mini-LED technology on future Apple devices. But it's still uncertain will this type of display land on this year's iMac release. As far as size goes, we are hoping for 23 or maybe 24 inches screen real estate, which will be slight increase comparable to previous version with only 21.5 inches. The bigger version that should replace 27 inch design, even if it wasn't that frequently mentioned, can be a target of some guessings which predict between 30 and 32 inch diagonal. Will it possibly come with higher refresh rate and eventually nano glass texture screen? It's unclear. You see, higher refresh rate on iMacs are generally not something that's been considered or predicted. Nobody's mentioning it in predictions. Nano glass, on the other hand, costs simply too much at least according to Apple, to be perceived as a part of a base option. It will be available, certainly, but only as an upgrade. Will cost you around 500 bucks like previous time. Now it would be awesome if you hit the thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe. It means a lot. Thank you. Other most probable improvements that we may look forward to, I'm talking about Face ID, Apple's facial recognition technology that's being used already on iPhones and professional iPads. That's no brainer considering how well the security system works and it has been anticipated for long. And not only on iMac, something similar should catch up with the upcoming redesigned Pro MacBooks. We know for certain that Apple has retired completely anything that includes Fusion in their dictionary. So the only kind of storage that will be available in these devices will be SSDs, likely coming with 256 gigs of starting configuration with the option to go up to eight terabytes of storage. As far as audio goes, there will be improvements, I hope, we can expect another set of three or five microphone array, something that Apple prefers to call studio quality microphones and new stereo speakers. Since previous year, 1080p FaceTime camera became standard on iMac, there is no reason to believe that somehow it will go backwards into something less capable. Listen, all of these changes matters some more than the other. But one thing seems promising. If Apple does release the iMac with new design, this may very be the year when iMac sales finally go really up. That's all. I hope you liked this video. Thank you for watching Digital Markings channel. My name is Marco. Talk to you soon. Have an excellent day. Bye.